Hello and welcome back to the Coa Joint video development blog. This is video number six. If you missed the last video, which is about the bots that we are working at the moment, then check out a link on the right hand side of the screen right about now. Um, so in this video, I'm actually going to take a break from the bot and uh, I'm just going to talk for a few minutes about um, the grenade preview that I've been uh, working on for a little while now. Um, the reason why I want a grenade preview system, so somewhere where we will uh, give you a region on the map where the grenade will go, is because um, I think it will be really instructive and useful for describing how the skill point systems will work for the actual player control character. Because as the skills change, you'll be able to visually see how your grenades get more accurate and how much further you can throw them, so you have something to compare by. And that won't just be when your grenade skills improve, but also when related skills improve, you'll be able to see that improvement. So um, let me just play you it first, and I'll show you what it's done. It's, it's, it's not complete as it will be in the demo, but it, the basis is there. I've, I've already done earlier versions of this. In fact, I've done about four different prototypes of this um, to get it really, uh, really looking good. Um, but so I know how to build the actual preview area from here. But this is what we have, uh, what I built actually today. So yeah, as you can see, there is a um, uh, an instantiated uh, like particle effect on the floor, and that's where the grenade would go if it was perfectly accurate. Um, but there will be a uh, inaccuracy sort of factor, so there'll be some sort of random velocity added onto it, so it would actually just go in sort of a circular region. And it's quite easy from taking that midpoint to actually predict uh, that circular region. But so you can see that it changes as I move around the mouse. Uh, this is just a, I'm sorry, uh, excuse the darkness, but I just really wanted to show the effect pretty well. And it smoothly changes um, as I move the cursor, you know, panning up and down and so on and so on. Um, I just don't, I want to show you as well that it doesn't just work for flat ground. This is what's actually taking me so long uh, because I didn't want it to have a sort of a continuous like tube coming out from the, the camera. I want it to just be pretty uh, sort of um, projected onto the map. So here's a wall right next to it. You can see the corner of it there. And actually, you can see it runs right up the wall. So if you wanted to throw a grenade onto a wall and see how it would bounce off, you can actually predict it on there as well. Okay. So that's actually what's working at the moment. Uh, it's got a nice sort of trail effect put on it. And quite fun to play around with, actually. <laughs> this is kind of sad, but there you go. Anyway, so let me shut that down. Uh, I'll just explain how I did it. Um, so if I just zoom in now on the scene view, here's the first person controller. Um, um, what actually happens is that I predict. Um, I've, uh, so along the path, so you can imagine for a projectile, it follows a parabolic arc. And along that parabolic arc, I uh, first of all, I calculate where the, uh, the, a grenade or a projectile will hit uh, the ground. So that's uh, the, the actual, they're actually instantiated, the grenades will be instantiated at this point here. Um, so where the sound uh, the speaker is. And so it's about, I think, 2.8 units down the ground so I predict where that's going to be and from there I take that distance and I split it into however many particles um, I want to um, actually use for my script and I'll explain what the particles are in a moment I take that distance I divide it by that number and then at those intervals so so like if that's the starting point that's the end point then I split that into intervals like that each of those intervals I create an empty transform um, which is a child of this particle thing and the Prefab is here, it's called particle, no, sorry, it's called prev unit. And on prev unit, it's just an empty um, with this ray casting script on it. And then basically, I do a ray cast tangentially to the projectile of the parabolic arc. So, because the tangent is the best approximation of the curve, which is a straight line, um, I'm basically ray casting from each of these transforms along the parabolic arc. And then where, if, if it collides with something, then we instantiate the explosion that we saw uh, a minute ago. Um, so let me just show you how I've done all that. Um, guys, feel free, um, if you see any problems with my code or you think there's a better way of me doing what I'm actually doing, then please tell me because I am relatively inexperienced with Unity. I've done a bit of other coding beforehand, but um, never any C-sharp. So if you see a better way for me to go about things, then please tell me. Um, if you think I've done it well, then um, please give me a like because um, I really appreciate the feedback. In fact, um, this is a, a, a video which is really inspired by the Twitter feedback I've been getting today. So um, if you come here from Twitter, thank you very much. 
So anyway, let me show you how this is done. Don't need that one anymore. Um, so this is the script on this particles here, and that is exactly where the camera is. And um, I didn't make it a child of the camera actually because I didn't want it to bank up and down. The camera, if I zoom on that, the camera obviously as I move up and down here, you can see it. Um, if I ignore the blue lines. That's in fact that's that, that's quite insightful actually because that shows uh, the parabolic arc. And also that's showing all the ray casts that I'm doing. Um, so that actually they're actually made up of line segments uh, doing draw rays in Unity, uh, but that actually shows you the parabolic arc I'm using. Uh, there's no air resistance yet, but that's quite easy to build in. I think it's just a squared term in Newton's law, <laughs> if I remember. But anyway, what I do, um, I start off by um, no, I don't use that particle system anymore. Oh no, I do. Um, nope, I tell a lie. I don't use that particle system. So I should probably comment those lines out. But um, all I do is, first of all, I calculate the angle that the uh, z-axis of the camera makes with the horizontal. And then, for using that number, I calculate the distance to the um, till I hit the ground with a projectile arc. So, if I play this again, um, where that projectile ends, uh, where you can see all the um, um, explosions are being prefabbed at that end, I calculate that distance there. And then, I up here, I've defined the number of particles I'm going to use to actually um, to, to put along that parabolic arc to ray cast from and I split that distance up like I said I instantiate a, um, uh, my prefabs which is just an empty with that script on it like I said and then I've got a class on that script and I just define the angle that the camera makes and the velocity the initial speed that we want the parabolic arc to be defined by um, and then in the, in the update, basically all I do is I update those values. I update the distance if it's changed. So if I change the bank, the angle that the camera makes, then I update the distance there. And then I recalculate the um, positions that those game objects, uh, sorry, those transforms should be along the parabolic arc so that they maintain their um, proportions. So that so that's basically how I create those um the particles that lie along that you actually seen the draw lines from here uh, that's on the that that script I just showed you is on this um, transform here which is a child of the first person controller when you actually play it instantiates these um, prev units here and on prev unit the script is to no, yeah this is the script from prev unit I would define the class that I actually um, um, that I define some variables for in here which is just the angle and velocity and then all I do here is I work out the, the tangent vector along the parabolic arc. Um, and then I um, do a raycast along that parabolic, uh, along that tangent. So making sure I've got the right coordinate systems and stuff like that using transform direction, etc. etc. And then if it hits something, so that the ray, if the raycast hits something, all I do is I. Um, Produce an inst uh, instant of the explosion, which is this thing here, particle preview. Um, if I maybe just put one in there, maybe you'll see. Yep, you just saw a little explosion there. So that's it, and that's all that happens. And then every frame, all it does is, is if it gets a, um, if it collides with something, and hopefully the way I set it up, it always will. Um, at the at the moment, obviously, because we're just on flat ground, um, it will always collide with something. So we should always get a preview. Um, when it, what I'm going to do also is I can extend it so that I will split that up into a certain that, that parabolic arc, that, that range or distance from the first person controller I split that up into say whatever 20, that seems to work fine for the moment and then I double it so that if the um, if the ground is say below me that parabolic arc will keep on going down so I will be able to preview throughout the, at any range on any, um, any map that was the reason why I built it really, because obviously maps are bumpy and all this sort of stuff, so I wanted it to be able to um, project onto any any surface. So that's basically what I've done for the grenade preview. You'll see it completed in the final demo. Um, if you like what you see, please uh, feel free to subscribe, give me some feedback. Um, next video I'll go back to the finite state machine, because uh, I'd like to show you off that. And uh, look forward to seeing you guys soon. Cheers.